is 11 of okay thank you max um uh my name is Carmel San Juan. Um, I am the intern for um, community and economic development here at Ramsey County. And uh, thanks for coming to this informational session about our Fair Housing Implementation Council or the FIC request for proposal for fair housing activities. Okay, so if you can move this slide, thank you. So agenda today, kind of give a background of Fair Housing Implementation Council or the FIC. Um, we'll also slightly touch on the 2020 analysis of impediments to fair housing choice. And um, we'll go through kind of um, what this RFP looks like and have a small Q&A at the end. This probably won't last the whole hour, but um, we'll see how far this goes, especially with any questions that we might have. So next slide. Okay, so some quick introductions. Um, I guess I could introduce myself and Max can introduce um, himself. And so my name is Carmel again. Um, I'm an intern for uh, Ramsey County. Um, and so uh, was in charge of doing a lot of the work for this RFP um, along with Max. And so I'll let him introduce himself. Oh, and you are on mute Max in case you're speaking. Yeah, sorry, I was just getting used to Zoom instead of Teams again. Um, <laughs> no worries. Uh, Max Hildes in Ramsey County, Manager of Housing Development and Policy. And I will uh, pass it along to Kathy Kugel at Dakota County. Hi, yes, I'm Kathy Kugel with the Dakota County CDA. And um, I am working with FIC as Dakota County serves as the fiscal manager. Are we going around or is that good? Um, I think, well, it is a small group, but either way, um, we can um, keep moving along um, as well. What do you think, Max? I think it's, um, I just wanted to introduce the key partners there as Dakota County CDA is the fiscal agent and Ramsey County hosting the RFP today. Yes, okay. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Um, and so uh, just some quick housekeeping. Um, our program website um, for the FIC RFP is ramseycounty.us slash FIC. And I can quickly type that into the chat, but this meeting will be recorded as well. Um, we have a Q&A and this will be at the end of the meeting. We'll be compiling it into uh, FAQ document that we'll be posting into that website, um, the ramseycounty.us slash fake. And then feel free to put questions in the chat or to unmute um, and ask questions directly as well. So that is up to you. And let me just quickly type this in. Hopefully got that, okay. And so a quick overview of the Fair Housing Implementation Council or the FIC, it's, it's, it was established in 2002 to coordinate fair housing efforts throughout the metro area. Um, funding members are below um, and you can go ahead and read that along if you are interested. And again, um, Dakota County CDA is the FIC's um, fiscal agent. And so I, you can go ahead and move on. Um, and so a quick overview of 2020 uh, AI or analysis of impediments to fair housing choice is that it is a report highlighting structural barriers to fair housing for members of historically marginalized groups protected from discrimination by uh, the Federal Fair Housing Act or FHA. A blueprint for the FIC is to affirmatively further fair housing and increase housing choice for protected classes of Minnesotans. And so um, I can share a link to that report in a bit. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find that link right now. But um, if Max has anything to add to that as well. And if you don't, you can feel free to keep moving along here. Okay. And so the RFP for fair housing activities, um, the purpose of this RFP is uh, that FIC requests proposals from any qualified agency, nonprofit or community organization focused on one or both 
of the fair housing activities below as stated in the AI or the analysis of impediments. And so those are goals three and six. And so um, support home ownership for households of color and ensure equal access to housing for persons with protected characteristics, lower income and homeless. And so those are the two um, goals that the FIC um, has been discussing. And oh, thank you. Um, thank you, Kathy, for posting that full AI report. Um, and so uh, eligibility for this RFP is that the project um, needs to be targeting populations within the seven county metro area. And a typical award range is from 47 to $71,000. And so if Max has anything to add at all, I'll let that, um, otherwise we can keep going. And so uh, goal three, support home ownership for households of color. Uh, examples may include, but not limited to, um, conducting home buyer and fin financial literacy education, um, conducting credit counseling, improvement programs, targeted communities of color, and also providing stewardship programming. And so um, those, that's goal three. Goal six, is ensure equal access to housing for persons with protected characteristics, um, lower income and homeless. Again, these are examples. Um, they're not limited to just these three bullets down below or for the previous slide as well, but um, providing translation services. And I lost the meeting, but um, I'll wait for that to come back, but... Sorry about that. I'll be quick. Right no back. I'll just explain my features here. And, uh, it's okay. Yeah. And also, you, um, I sent an email with the slides as well. So hopefully, um, if you ever wanted to have those up, uh, they are in your calendar invite as well. And so I'll keep going here. Examples, um, provide trans translation services for federally funded programs across the metro, um, hold legal services, eviction prevention, and other educational activities, as well as conduct fair housing training for landlords and renters. And so again, these are examples. They're not um, limited to just these uh, activities. And so just wanted to reiterate that as well. Yeah, uh, the FIC is really looking for creative ideas that respond to these two goals and these strategies as well listed in the AI suite encourage um, potential applicants to review the AI um, and reflect on these goals and think about how it connects to their work or their planned work as well. Okay, thank you, Max. And so a quick overview of what the proposal will look like. The proposal is over Zoom grants and we'll send a link to that. It'll be um, in the following slides next. Um, coming up as well. And so kind of a quick work plan and budget, describe proposed scope of work, um, how it connects to the RFP and uh, racial equity focus as well, focus on reducing disparities in housing by serving um, BIPOC communities and other protected classes. And then also kind of these intentional and inclusive engagement strategies that should be designed in partnership with BIPOC communities and provided in detail. And go ahead, thank you. And qualifications and experience, um, describing organizations' uh, experience and qualifications to execute the proposed scope of work, provide examples of past work, um, and then also organizational capacity, kind of describing key personnel, um, identifying key team members and um, any, and the, these, uh, the work, the proposed scope of work should not acquire, uh, require, excuse me, require additional hiring. And so I just wanted to highlight those kind of four kind of big main things. And so we can go through what the actual um, RFP uh, Zoom grants link looks like. And so, oh, and. I went ahead of myself. I wanted to share an application timeline as well. Um, the RFP opened uh, last September 21st, so last Wednesday, and we have our informational session today. 
Um, this closes on October 19th and the FIC uh, pl plans to review proposals November 18th and then execute a contract no later than January 31st of next year. And so a proposed performance schedule for this project is from January through December of 2023 next year. Okay. And so uh, you'll see to the left a request for a proposal kind of screenshot of what our Ramsey County website looks like, a quick overview of the timeline, um, uh, the info session, kind of how to get to it, and then in the boxes, red boxes below, kind of a link to this Zoom grant, and I can also quickly add that to the chat as well. But um, that is how to access the application for this grant. Uh, for this RFP. And so um, no paper applications will be accepted and a deadline of October 19th um, at 5 p.m. And so if Max has anything to add while I find this link to send, um, the Zoom Gains link, I mean, I'm just going to copy and paste that into the chat. Yeah, as soon as we send that link, I can pull up Zoom Grants. Um, on my computer as well and uh, show you what it looks like from an applicant's standpoint as well. It's um, fairly straightforward. Thank you. I also have that pulled up by chance, Max, in case you are trying to access it. So I, okay. in case. Um, I can pull it up right now. Okay, cool. Um, so when you, after you click on the link, um, you'll have to create a Zoom Grants account if you don't already have one. Um, it, you know, username, password, it's fairly straightforward. You'll get an email directly to your thing, uh, to your account to um, confirm your password. Um, and so this is my uh, fake one. I use my Gmail account for this. Um, and this is what it looks like from the applicant's point of view. So it shows you, um, it'll show you the list of all the available activities through the Ramsey County portal at this time. Um, and you'll click on the uh, fair housing one. And then um, this is what it looks like after you click start application for the fair housing one. So, It'll um, show you all the information you need. So again, a basic description of the program and the FIC, and then the requirements of this application. And so um, this is kind of more legalese, um, talking about eligible uh, organizations within the requirements. Then you'll see our library resources. Um, these are all the um, PDFs that you might find necessary to apply or that are required um, for application. Then. Um, you will see the pieces that you need to fill up. So the, the summary is what we just reviewed up above. And then you have eligibility determination. And so these are just some few basic questions um, to make sure you're an eligible organization. And then some of those required um, documents that you will download out of the um, library, fill out, and then upload here on the right. So, um, so a lobbying acknowledgement, basically a federal requirement there. Um, that you'll download, fill out, and upload as an example. Um, and then we go to the next tab. So everything's sorted by tabs here. You'll go to application questions, and um, you'll see the, um, you know, uh, the same kind of things that Carmel just went over. So give a clear description of the proposed scope of work. How does the proposal focus on reducing disparities and connect to the Fair Housing Act, um, and so on and so forth. Um, and so those are narrative questions and. Um, they have a high maximum character limit. You do not need to reach that maximum character limit if needed. Um, um, but you have plenty of space and time to um, kind of describe your program in detail. Then uh, the budget tab is a little less intuitive of a tab. Um, we, if we break down the different types of funding sources. So we wanna see the um, kind of how your program is funded and why it needs a FIC request as well. So. You'll see um, um, the thick requests here, and so you'll be able to list um, if you're requesting forty thousand dollars from thick, and then you also have some state money in your program as well as some local money. You would write that out here, um, and then 
down here, you have our funding uses and ex expenses. And so you'll kind of give us an estimate of how you plan to break that down. And, um, and then you have opportunity to discuss your budget as well. So um, recommended to um, uh, fill out each uh, portion of these um, before you move on from the budget tab. Um, within the budget narrative down at the bottom, um, I think just explaining out the numbers that you put out before and then explaining what, uh, kind of, again, reiterating how your dollar ask connects to your proposal is what's uh, uh, needed there. Um, then pretty straightforward, the next uh, tab is project addresses and contacts. So who's the contact for this program and for this application? And then the attachments is where um, you'll be able to upload um, the documents that are required from the um, um, from the document library. So that is Zoom grants. Um, it just kind of streamlines the application process um, so that we don't need paper forms and we're not using Demand Star uh, for those who are familiar with that. So uh, yes. Uh, after we receive applications, um, the applications will be reviewed by uh, members of the FIC on their small evaluation team. And then the full FIC um, will uh, review uh, and approve uh, the review team's uh, recommendations there. And so we plan to do that um, November 18th. And then we would be moving towards um, conversations with you after that date. Let's see if I can stop sharing now. Okay, thank you, Max. Yes. Okay, I don't think we have too much left on our slides, but I believe we go into Q&A if I remember my slide content right in my head. Yes. Um, okay. I'm just trying to get out of this window. I'm having trouble with my cursor. No worries. Um, uh, so I guess if folks have any questions at all um, about the overall process or anything about it at all, um, feel free to unmute and ask out loud. Or if you'd rather type your questions, we can also read those as well and um, address it um, out here right now. Um. I'll share one more um, um, example of a form. Uh, this is the um, form that help, uh, we'd be using for um, reporting. So um, this is a draft of what we'd be using for reporting. And so we'll both need to report, um, uh, selected vendors would need to report both on demographics, as this is uh, CDBG funding, this is federal funding, um, as well as uh, costs as well. So, um, and we can get more into that as vendors are selected, but this will just give you a precursor to that. Um, so we'll start with uh, direct costs. And this is an example, um, pretending uh, like it was a legal aid organization. And um, so um, we'd break it down by quarter. Um, and obviously those dates would change for uh, this program. And then you'd have, um, staff expenses and salaries. So any um, any direct um, salary costs that you are needed to implement this program would be considered staff expenses and would be considered a direct cost. Other direct costs may include um, staff training, travel, if you are traveling to implement um, uh, around the metro area to implement this program. Um, um, let's say you have to have um, specific phone number for this, that would be a direct cost. Um, printing for the materials would be a direct cost. And maybe it's um, outreach for the events that you might hold, that would be a direct cost. Indirect expenses are those things that uh, benefit your entire organization. So that would be um, no more than 10%, unless you have a negotiated rate with the federal government on indirect costs. Um, but that could include such things as piece of your office expenses, piece of your IT network, um, those kind of core things that you need as a organization to um, successfully uh, implement any program. So there is a component for that. Um, for client and demographic, um, 
you would be um, creating a client number. You would tell us if it was a new client or a previously reported client. Um, the number, if there was a household, the number of people in that household, um, their income. So income is something that is very important for um, this type of funding. Everyone needs to be low to moderate income. Um, and then um, what part of the metro would they be, uh, what part of the metro did they live in? So we can kind of get a sense of who we served, um, what their race is, are they um, Hispanic? Are they a female headed household? And in some programs we'll need to collect um, female head of household and age 62 or over. Um, and we'll get into that as we move towards post vendor selection. And then description of how, description of the serve, and then, um, and then uh, last name of the staff provided. So this is just an example, and this will be tweaked as we move forward, but I wanted to provide you an example of reporting. Thank you. Okay, so I think we can move back into questions if there are any at all. And so feel free to unmute or type it in the chat. Well, hearing no questions, um, we will send around when uh, an updated web page that reminds us that this will um, be posted on the ramseycounty.us slash FIC. Um, and that um, if you do have any questions, you can reach out to Carmel or I. Um, I will pull up the slide really quick that has our contact info. Um, and I'll put it in the chat as well so that you can see that. Um, and any question on um, on any of the content, we're happy to answer. Um, as you dive into Zoom grants itself, um, they're, they have a help um, email and they're very helpful. I've never had them not respond within the same day. Um, so if you're having trouble creating an account or uploading a material, um, the Zoom grants itself has a really um, helpful interface there. Okay, if there is nothing else that um, people have to share at all, um, we can give back uh, over 30 minutes of our time back in our days and um, happy Monday. <laughs> okay. Bye.